welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of All Ball Chicago. I'm your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald All-American, your host, Marcus, living in the building. What's up, Marcus? What's up, my beautiful people? And we got a special guest in the building today, a Chicago legend, fresh out of King High School, dominated at King, did his thing under Landon Cox, went on to Chicago State. Do his thing at Chicago State, playground legend in Chicago, one of the guys. Give it up for Fred Shepard, a.k.a. Flip, man. What's up, boy? What's up, my brothers? Man, man, it's, uh, it's a pleasure, man, to have uh, someone that I looked up to, you know, at King High School to be on our show, uh, Fred Shepard. But we going to call him Flip to all of our listeners out there because that's what I'm going to call him. I don't call him Fred. I call him Flip. So for all of our listeners, when you hear say flip, that's what we talking about. Uh, so flip, man, when you uh, when you got involved in playing basketball, man, and you was truly one of those street guys, you know, you wasn't like strictly hooping. You was doing that other stuff too, you know. And the, sure. and, and a lot of people don't didn't know that that you was in the streets more so on that basketball court. So talk a little bit about that and then how you got away from that and started focusing more on sports. Well, the thing about it is I was always focused on sports, but I was, um, I was around a lot. I was around a lot of older guys. So a lot of my older guys, which I call my OG gangsters, Right. Was, was old. They they were old game bangers. They was old drug dealers. Uh, but one of the things that that was good with them was they played ball. They they always played ball, so I always played with them. Um, I'm gonna mention the guy. I'm gonna mention the name. A guy named Red Ross. Okay. Red Ross was a was a notorious gangster. Notorious gangster. Grew up with David Boxdale, Larry Hoover, and them. He used to run with those guys. When I was coming along, when I was coming along in high school, my freshman year in high school, he used to have basketball teams. So he had like Bo Ellis, Stevie King, Lee Arthur Scott, Mazel Greer. So he had a team with those guys, and uh, they used to travel around the city and play. So one day, an older guy that I used to hang out with, his name was Terry Wright. They called him Kick Booty. He was on one of the teams one time. And one time I went to the park with him to watch him play. And uh, one of their guys didn't show up. So he was like, man, go and put some clothes on. You can play with us, this and this and that. Now, this guy, Red, was the type was, hey, man, I don't know this kid. He ain't finna play with us. We'll wait to get somebody. They ain't going to even start the game until I tell them to start the game. <laughs> so Kick Booty convinced him to let me play. I got out there, started playing, um, took a rebound off, got, got a rebound, took the ball the length of the court, and I dunked on a guy about 6'7". Red called timeout, brought me to the side and said, look, from now on, you don't play with nobody in Chicago but me. <laughs> wow. Nobody but me. He said, and this in this particular game, Bowden wasn't even playing. But then, like when I went to the next tournament with him, that's when I met Bo Ellis and Stevie King and Lee Arthur Scott. Now these is an old true legend. Right. And you know Bo Ellis won the NCAA. <laughs> right. So we had a kid, we had a guy on our team named Mazel Grill. He was real quiet. He went to North Park. This guy here used to score the ball like Jordan. What? Yeah, Mazel used to, Mazel used to flat out score the ball like Jordan. Get forty a game, Damn. with no three points. Damn. So, Red used to take me out of town. I used to, I used to be in his van. We used to go all over the city. He had a van, and um, we used to go out of town to Indianapolis. They used to have a tournament called the Dust Bowl. We went out there and played Joe Barry Carroll and them and some of the guys from Purdue, and we beat the shit out of them. <laughs> um, one thing about Red, though, one thing about Red was he had a lot of money. He made sure I ain't need nothing. My mother used to be like, 
Why you don't never ask for money? No stuff like that. Because they used to take care of me. Wow. One of the persons that that really truly put me in basketball, that really structured me in basketball, was Brian Notre Dad. Mm. Clarence Notre. He was my field house yeah. coach. He was my field house wow. coach when I was a kid growing up. And he used to try to keep me away from those guys. And he had a he had an outdoor tournament that was the best outdoor tournament I ever played in. And I played at YVI and all that. But he had an outdoor tournament where I learned about a lot of the older guys that played. Like Sonny Parker that played with Sonny. Sonny had a guy that played with him. His name was Arthur Bright. He's the best small forward I've ever seen play the game. Wow. And I learned about a lot of other guys like Michael Poole from Dunbar who lived a block and a half from me in the projects, and I never even knew who he was until he played in the tournament. Wow. And I played in that tournament for years until Landon Cox got to be my coach. And he said, I do not want y'all playing on concrete. All right, let's stop right there, Flip. Let's stop right there because I got something. I knew he was going to come right there at that playground. Now, it's – it's been told to me that you and Ice Dildy went to five star. Oh that's yeah. Out, that's oh, outside my. courts, right? Oh my goodness. And yeah. That the rumor that, was go that ahead. you that you that you dominated, that you dominated guys. Talk about some of those guys that was at that camp and you came out MVP. Okay. Wow. We go to five star. Uh Mind you, I've never, I've never been out out of town to play ball like that ever. And um, we get there, we get there, just a a, a group of kids, a, a a group of kids. We're we're in the uh, we're in the mountains in uh, Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. So they had it where all all Americans slept in the bunks. They they had nice facilities for all all Americans and we slept in little cabin. <laughs> wow. So when we first get there, they they draft you. They put you in a long line and they pick one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. They tell you get out there and play. So we get out there and play, get out there and play. So I, I played pretty good. So I got drafted. I got drafted number one. As you know in five star it's the NBA league, the NCAA, the NIT. Most of the seniors play in the NBA league. So I, I get drafted in the NBA. So I get drafted. I get I get put on a team. So I'm on a team with Willie Glass from St. John's, Corey Gaines from uh, he went to UCLA first, and then he went to Loyola Marymount. Uh huh. Uh, Coach Billy Donovan, who just left OKC, he was my point guard. Wow. And it was me and Dave Pop Dave Popson from North Carolina. <laughs> so. We doing all the drills, you know. They you make you got to do all the drills in the morning, and you got to go through all the the stations and everything. And then you play in the evening. So I I, I used to be in, in in the cabin. So Tracy Dildy, uh -huh. as you know, Tracy got that mouth. Uh huh. <laughs> Tracy used to Tracy used to antagonize people. He he used to have Billy Donovan in tears. I said Tracy, leave him alone, man. Leave him alone, I, man. That, that that white boy, he can't play. He can't play. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. So we play our first game. We play our first game. Man, Billy Donovan out there throwing dimes, no-look dimes, and behind the back, behind the head, shooting jumpers. I came in. I came in that evening. Because, you know, in the evening, they bring you down. They, they start telling you who was the offensive player of the, of the day and the defensive player of the day. I told Trace, I said, you can leave that white boy alone, boy, because <laughs> – he could play. <laughs> so one day, me and Willie Glass, we sitting on we sitting on on the ground waiting waiting to play. So you got Muggsy Bowles, Reggie Williams, um, uh, Reggie Lewis, Wow, Pearl Washington. What? 
So all those guys coming around, they was like, who is Fred Shepard? Who is Fred Shepard? I was like, that's me. It's like, yeah, your, your, your little young fella going around talking a lot of shit. Say he gonna my ass. I said, well, if he said it, if he said it, then that's what's gonna happen. They was like, yeah, all right, we, we can't wait to play against you. Wow. Boy, I told they ass up. Every single day I went against them. And see, Garfinkel had a lot of the All Americans on the same team. So they had uh, another white guy, Tom Sheehy, who went to Virginia. Mm-hmm. Then they had Bruce Dalrymple, who went yep. to uh, Providence. Went to, he went to uh, the same place where Kenny Anderson went. He went to Indiana for, did he go to Indiana? No, Bruce Dalrymple went to. Uh, yeah, it was Georgia Tech. He went to Georgia Tech. Yeah, he went to Georgia Tech. You had Dwayne Farrell that used to play at Atlanta Hawks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I get invited to the. First of all, you, you know, y'all know me as a person who used to dunk the ball a lot. Right. Yeah. So we couldn't even dunk in camp. We couldn't even dunk no. in camp. So they let us dunk in the All Star game. And I damn near ripped the backboard off the All Star game. I was <laughs> so. So I had a, you. You got to say I had a great camp, man. I had a great camp. So we're we're flying on the way back home. So I don't know if you guys remember Pete Gillum. He used to be the coach at Xavier. He used to be the assistant coach for Notre Dame when I was at, when I was in uh, high school. Was it Pete? His name was Pete Gillum. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he came, he came on the plane. He came down there where me and Tracy were sitting on the plane. He said, uh, he said, Fred, can I speak with you for a minute? I said, yeah. So we on the plane with Bobby Crimmins, all those guys. So he said, uh, he said, we never even heard of you. He said, man, you tore those guys up, man. He said, uh, he said, man, all them coaches down there, because they, they were all in first class. He said, all them coaches in first class. He said, man, they all want to, they all want to come back and have a conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> but we know your high school coach. We know we can't even have conversations with you. Oh, man. <laughs> so I, said, I said, yeah, that's right. That's right. You got to talk to coach. <laughs> But when I got home, but when I got home, guys, and uh, we were working out, and they had sent Coach a letter. They was like, uh, Coach stopped practice. He was like, I want everybody to come around. He said, uh, want, I want everybody to congratulate Flip because he went to five star. He told them boys up, and they named him preseason All American. Ah, uh, that's huge. So, I mean, after that, I mean, you really couldn't tell me them. I was playing anyway. Cause, I mean, honestly, I was a gangster at basketball. But after that, for real, for real, I, we, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm, I, I'm a score, and I'm gonna knock your ass down if you. It, it, it is what it is. <laughs> right, it is what it is. Whatever you want to want, whatever you want to make after that, let's do it. Hey, Flip, you did not take no stuff, right. man. I do from nobody, agree, bro. <laughs> And I, ain't, <laughs> and, and I ain't take no stuff from nobody messing with none of my guys either. Yeah, and team, that, and I that's what I was on my team. But that's what I wanted to say too, Flip. And I think you was the one that when I got over to King, you you basically told the Mel Rook and you know, like, hey, take care of him, you know, make sure he's good. Cause I remember a guy coming up to me saying, you good over here, man. You ain't got to worry about nothing over here. So I'm like, okay, I'm good over here, then. you know, because I, I didn't know nothing about, you know, that area, man. That was that was kind of your area and, you know, and some of the other guys that was from around there. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I knew that guy came up to me. I don't even know his name. He's like, hey, Marcus Liberty, you good over here, man. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I, ain't play no, I ain't play no games with mess with none of my teammates, man. I mean. I mean, we lived in the L. Rookin neighborhood, and shit, we go two blocks another way. We in the disciple neighborhood. <laughs> yep. Yep. But yep. like I said before, shit, I said at the round table with all of them, they, it, it was no no contest with me because all of the young guys that was game banging, I knew all they leaders. Right. I knew Chiefs. Right. I hung around right. Chiefs. So. I was like, like when Tracy them came over there, Tracy came from over there on the east side. 
And Tracy was, was the worst because Tracy wanted to mess with the game bankers girls. <laughs> And, oh Tracy just, and Tracy just chimed in and said all facts, too. <laughs> and I was like, they was like, man, this, this Tracy, man. I was like, man, y'all going to have to give him a pass, dude. That's, that's that no give him a pass. They was like, all right, Flip, man. All right, man. But Flip, that's you. You were a beast on that football field. I be, most people I talked to about you, they said you could have probably made it in the NFL. Yeah, I played both. I played both from. I played both sports equally. Wow. I played both sports equally. I man, I I was on my way because I played football at King too. But uh, when Cox got there, Cox was like, "No, nah, it ain't gonna be no football." <laughs> It's gonna be all basketball here. Shut and it down. And I was re getting recruited by Michigan, Georgia, all type of uh, college uh, recruiters for football, because I played tight end and linebacker. But yeah, um, I, I can see that too. Yeah. But like I said, one of the most instrumental person in me playing ball was Brian Notre, Daddy Clarence Notre. He taught me the game. He. Uh, we got to get Clarence on, man. He spent he spent a lot of time with me, and I I tried to reach out to Brian, man, because I wanted to congratulate him on his success, but I also wanted to, you know, congratulate on him, him and his brothers loaning their daddy to me because my dad was a drug addict in the streets. Oh wow! At the time when I was growing up, and their father was was like my dad. I played softball league for him, football league for him, basketball league for him. So, I was, and I was always at the field house every day, all day. Wow. So, Notary was like my dad. Wow. So, man, like I said, man, I and I see him today, man. I just thank him all the time because when I was coming up, Brian was a baby. Right. Brian was a baby. Brian got two older brothers over him. Right. But, uh, yeah. But, 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 man, Flip, just listening to you talk about him, that, you, that shows how much he played a big part. And he didn't get a dime back from that. You know, that was just something that he wanted to do out of the kind of his, his heart for you. Yes, sir. He did, but he did it for a lot of kids. He did it for a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I probably was – his second star that he really dealt with. First was Tyrone Adams, who played at Kansas State. Tyrone Adams. He played at King, too, with Teddy Grubb. And um, Tyrone was good. Tyrone was real good. Tyrone got drafted. And uh, like I said, Tyrone probably was his first star, and I probably was the second star. Wow. Yeah, we gotta get we gotta get Clarence on, man, uh, and talk about some history of uh, Chicago basketball. So, wow. He, hey, Flip, he, was he, you was, was you naturally stocky like that though, or did was no, you lifting? Because most dudes wasn't lifting back then. Was we live? I said no, no, Bobby. What 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 happened with me was, I had a old, I had two older brothers. One was an educator football player and the one that was over me um he was a bodybuilder my oh. brother Dana was a bodybuilder he was a county sheriff and he was a bodybuilder oh. so a lot of times when I used to be you know how when kids finish their homework and they rushing to go outside with their friends my brother used to be like hey man <laughs> get your ass down here and lift these weights because we had weights in our basement <laughs> So I used to be like, man, I don't want to lift no more weight. He used to be like, no, you lifting weights. <laughs> so I would go down there, lift weights for him, you know, hurry up and do my reps so I can get the fuck outside. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you figure back then, the biggest niggas on the court was you and Terry Cummins. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's how I got, that's how I got to be big. Wow. I mean, naturally, naturally, I, I was always tall because I'm I'm six four now. Right. When I was in se when I was in seventh grade, I was six two and a half. 
Okay. And see, people don't know, when I was in seventh grade, I played with King High School in the summer league games. <laughs> oh, yeah, wasn't I supposed to be doing that. I played with King High School in the summer league games. No, it was legal then. See? Oh, it was in the 80s? Yeah, it was legal then. You could play oh. in the summer league with them. You couldn't play in regular school with them, but you could play right. in the summer league games with them. Oh. That's how I got it. But if you was in seventh grade, that was... You was in seventh grade. That wasn't no. Uh, that wasn't in the eighties. <laughs> no, that was in the seventies. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was about seventy-seven. Yeah, because I went to King. I went to King seventy-nine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that's how I got a chance to play with Teddy Grubbs now. Talk a little bit about him, Flip, because I think a lot of people don't know yeah. about Teddy Grubb. Let me let me let me explain one thing. Y'all all was good in, at, at King High School, but there's nobody better than Teddy Grubbs to come out of King. That's including Ephraim, Jamie, Marcus, Tracy, me, anybody. He man, was the best. That's a lot. That's... Yeah, he's the best I've ever seen play at King High School, man. Wow. wow. See, I never got that opportunity to see him play, man. I saw him in DePaul, but never in high school. The things he, the thing he used to do, man, was unreal. I've never seen nobody get a twenty foot jump shot block by nobody but Teddy Teddy Grubbs. He used to block people twenty foot jump shots out the air. How tall was he? It was tough. Teddy was about six. Teddy was about six eight. He had a wingspan about seven three, something like that. Because Teddy had long arms. Wow. Sure did. He can flat out. He can flat out shoot the mid range jump shot, ten to fifteen feet. Teddy Grubb, he can knock down defender, right? Yeah, he could jump out the gym. They used to what have happened man. to him. It's a lot of different stories, but one of the main stories that I heard that I can believe is true is some of his teammates end up screwing his girlfriend and they called him over and he went in there and they was doing that to him. Wow. Oh, and he went crazy after that. He he just That's never scandalous. was the same after that. That's scandalous, man. That's scandalous. Yes, it is. Very much so. Very College much so. College teammates. Huh? His his de his DePaul teammates. Damn. And, yeah. and really and truly, really and truly, I could have had something done to him. Right. Right. And done to his teammates? Yep. Yeah, that's, but that's. Teddy, Teddy, was a, Teddy was a quiet kid, man. Real quiet. Never really said much. Teddy, Teddy had like a four-point error to, at King, man. He was a good student. Yeah, man. That's why wow. Flip. That's why. Wow. Flip, that's why I, I like, you know, us doing this all ball Chicago, man. So you hear stories, you know. <clears throat> of course, I don't even want to talk about, you know, his, you know, off the court issues and the things that he had mentally, you know, some mental health issues eventually. But his on court ball play, like you just mentioned, that he was probably one of the best basketball players that come out of King High School, you know. Yeah. That, that people enjoy watching. And then he had an opportunity to go play at DePaul and almost could have won a national championship if those things didn't happen to him. They probably would have won a national championship. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and I ain't going to say no name, but it was a lot of selfishness over there. And um, especially after he shined on national TV, after he shined on national TV, you never even heard of him anymore. Right. How can you go? How can you go to scoring like twenty eight on national TV on one of the top teams, and one of the top ranked teams in the country, and you don't even play over five minutes no more? Mm. That's unreal. Mm. Yeah, that is. That That's is. Unreal. And mind you, mind you, coming out of high school, you're the number one player in the country. Wow. Oh, he was the number one player in the country? Number one player in the country. And that's our king.
Do it, dude. What you talking about? What you talking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all hey, had Ephraim winners and him and hey, Bobby, <laughs> and, and, and Bobby, and listen to listen to this. Were you were you Teddy come out of King seventy nine? Who else come out of seventy nine? And he the number one player in the country. Isaiah Thomas. Was that match? Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas. Thomas. Right. Zeke. That wow. says a lot, bro. That says a lot. Liv, did you know he was the number one player in the country? Yeah, I heard. I heard that he was the number one player in the country. That's crazy, man. He was. <laughs> we had a lot of number one players in the country. Yeah. <laughs> I know y'all. Y'all coach was the coach. <laughs> hey, like, but, you just think about you just think about Ephraim, Ephraim and the McDonald's. But, but, but flip. Let's talk. We had you had we. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got you got Ephraim. You got uh -huh. Ephraim in the, in the McDonald's All American game in Chicago, and John Wooden wasn't even playing. He started him, let him play two minutes, put him on the bench. In his hometown. In his hometown. He put him on the bench, and he, and Ephraim was a type that, okay, if it's like that, then I, I, I won't play. He's sitting down. And I can tell, I can tell the way he's sitting. And coach tells me in the stands, coach say, go down there and talk to him. I say, what you want me, what you want me to say to him? Coach like, go down there and talk to him. Cause we all hung out. Me, uh, me, Ephraim and Reggie Woodward hung out together. Mm -hmm. I go down and I say, E, what's wrong? What's, what's going on? I say, man, he don't even want to play me. I said, uh, I said, well, he got to start you the next half. You're a starter. Second half, he told the McDonald's game up, won the MVP. Had 24 points or something wow. like that. And he, wow. In the second half. Wow. <laughs> Destroyed all of them. Now you're talking about Johnny Dawkins, all of them playing. Destroyed them. Brad Doherty. Destroyed them. Won the MVP. Wow. Wow. Hey, look, your boy Sean Higgins chimed in, Lib. He said, um, uh, uh Teddy Grubbs was the number one player in 79 over Ralph Sampson, James Worthy, and Sam Bowie. Yes, sir. In that same class. That's crazy. Yes, That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Cause that means what his career would have been like if their career was like that in the league. Dang. Man, he was so he he was so good, man. It, it was unreal, man. Now, and now and you got Sean Higgins who chiming in. That he letting you know. Right, Sean and Sean know his Sean know his basketball man, and he he he, he keeps it one hundred too. Yes, right. sir. One hundred. Yeah. Um, but 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 flip, you were Damn. you were known, and I remember when I was used to come to the games and watch my brother hoop with y'all, man, at King, and y'all had the the nicknames on the back of your your, your, <laughs> your dirt, and you was Doctor was it Doctor Duncanstein? Yep, Doctor Duncanstein. <laughs> you stole that name, didn't you? I stole it from uh, Daryl Griffin. Daryl Griffin. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one, though. I stole it from Daryl Griffin. And, and hey, I do you remember he caught that lob? Go ahead, Lil. No, uh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna say you remember when Doctor Duncanstein caught that half court lob on NBC, called it backwards and ducked it backwards on the team. Yeah, y'all remember that? Yeah. I like, I've never seen nobody to this day do that. Now, Bobby, do you remember this? Do you remember him playing in the summer league at Chicago State? No, I didn't see that. He played. He played against us because Ricky Green and you was on the same. Ricky Green was on the same team with him at Utah. He bought right. He bought Adrian Danley. Ricky bought Adrian Danley, Daryl Griffin, Jeff Wilkins. J.J. Anderson, remember J.J. used to come off the bench at Utah. Wow. Right. And they Dang. played, he bought, he bought the starting four plus the six man from the Utah Jazz to get their ass whooped at Chicago State. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, hey, let's talk about some of those, those people, like some of those players back then, Flip. Talk about some of those players back in the day that, that was at, you know, IIT, uh, Chicago State, Malcolm X, all those places. Talk Chicago about some State. of those players. Chicago State was the best. Chicago State was the best. 
And as you know, when that tournament was going on, you never even heard about violence going on. No. No. And, and if and if you came up there to the tournament and you wasn't there and you wasn't there on time to get in the building, you're not getting in. And you hung Dead. out on the grass, you hung out on the grass just to see them guys come up out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was I was fortunate. I was fortunate when I was coming out of high school, because you have to be a, a you have to be a graduated senior on your way to college to play. Mm -hmm. Coach Cox had a team. He had the college players. Mm. He only had one pro. That was Maurice Cheeks. Mo. Because Cox and Maurice Cheeks' daddy was tight. Maurice Cheeks' daddy is wow. the one who paid. Maurice Cheeks' daddy is the one who paid for me and Tracy to go to Five Star. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. So I got a chance to play a lot. My high school coach. Back then, school. Flip, you could walk right up to those guys, man, at Chicago State. Like, Reggie, right. Thies, like I told Liv, I said, when when, it, when Otis Gilmore came on, he the first pro I ever met. I walked right up to him at Chicago State, like, man, that's Otis Gilmore, G. <laughs> Straight up, let, man. Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a story about Reggie Thiers. Reggie Thiers was my idol. I didn't love nobody, no other basketball cold, player <laughs> but Reggie Thiers. He was cold. I get a chance to play him against him at Chicago State. I'm like starstruck. You know, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still that dog nigga now. Right. But I'm starstruck. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm out here with Reggie. Now he coming down top speed. Now, you know, Reggie was 6'7". Yeah. He right. coming down top speed. Now, Reggie's favorite moves was the juke you right. Uh -huh. Spin on you, the same move LeBron used in the lane. <laughs> yeah. Reggie used to do that all the time. So he frustrated me a and couple, couple times. He frustrated me a couple times. So I came to the bench. I was like, damn, man, this motherfucker here. So Mo, <laughs> so Mo Cheeks pulled me to the side. And Mo, Mo Cheeks never used to talk. Mo said, look, you have to determine which, which side of the court you want him to be on. He said, he said, you keep letting him come up the middle. He can go to either side. He That's said, fine. but once you once you put him on one side, then that's the only side he's going to be able to operate on. I said, okay. I get back out there. He comes with the same move. I cut him off, put him on one side. He spin, I take the ball, <laughs> go dunk it. Boom. <laughs> you know how the crowd is there. The crowd going crazy. What? <laughs> now, now, Bobby, I'm on his ass now because now I know him. Now I know mm -hmm. his moves. And his body wasn't as big as my body. I, I was just as big as he was. He was taller than me, right. but I was big. So I'm right. knocking him around. So we get on the timeout. The man who ran the Chicago State Tournament, Shelly Clark, Shelley came Cl over. He, he came over. He said, he came over to Coach Cock and said, look, you're going to have to take Shepard off Reggie because Reggie said he out here to have fun. He ain't out here to play hard. <laughs> so, Pretty boy Reg. So they, basically they was telling me, you got, if either he going to have to take him off of him or he ain't going to be able to play. Wow. <laughs> so, so I'm, so I'm now, now I'm pissed now. Now I'm pissed. I'm like, all right. So they put me on the bench. So Mo Cheeks said, I got him. Man, Mo Cheeks was taking the ball from that man. That's when I first, Marcus, that's when I first learned about pro strides. Right. I seen him right. take the ball. I seen Maurice Cheeks take the ball from, from Reggie Theas at half court, and it took him three dribbles, and he was under the basket, laying the ball up. Right. That's wow. that pro stride. But that tournament, man, that tournament, that tournament was so great, man. Then, you know, I had MJ come up there. But that summer that I hung out with Wes Matthews Sr. Yeah, I remember Wes. Wes. Wes was so good, man. Wes was so fast and so athletic. 
he he was unreal. The best player I seen, the best player I seen in the tournament at a guard, as far as a mid range game, was Quentin Daly. Quentin Daly. Oh yeah, he never, Daly. He, unguardable. He, he never shot the ball over twenty feet. He always was was in the lane using his body, knew how to get the ball off, and he used to score thirties and forties mid range. Man. Well, Frederick Hughes too now. <laughs> Well, not Frederick Hughes in that getting like sixty? Nah, don't don't believe that. Don't believe that. Al Frederick was. I seen Al him Frederick get a thirty at that at forty piece a couple of times in that inner. Yeah, he 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 got a couple thirties and forties because he he shot the ball every time he got it. <laughs> you ain't lying. You ain't lying. But I'm gonna tell you, his brother was better than him, Chris Hughes. Right. Mm. Yeah, he was tough, he was, man. He was versatile. He was way more versatile. He could dribble the ball. Yeah. Chris Hughes, Chris Hughes kind of reminds you of James Harden. That's how he scored the ball. Just like James Harden scored the yeah. ball. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. He get to the, Chris Hughes to get to the basket. He had long arms. One thing about Chris and Al Frederick, and I do get Al Frederick credit about this. He never shot the ball off balance. He always was squared up when he shot the ball. Right. Chris was the yeah. same way. Chris would come down, Marcus, Chris would come down and be spinning, throwing the ball through his legs, around his back. But when he come up to shoot, he's perfect form. Elbow in there, straight. Hey, Flip, man, I used to just, I get there early just to watch him in the crib line. The crib line was a dunk contest up in that mug, man. Man, dudes was doing a lot. J.J. Anderson was nasty in the crib line, man. You know, you want me... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this story. I leave. I go to next year. Coach don't coach, so I'm like, I know I ain't gonna be able to get on the team. I mean, even though my uncle was, my uncle was the coach of Playboy. Pryor, yeah. Oh. That's my uncle, Red Pryor. Rick yep. Pryor is my cousin. Yeah. So. Oh damn. So I said, now I can go to my uncle team. But he got a gang of people. He got, he got Terry, he got Craig Hodges. Yeah. He got, he got a gang of people. <laughs> so, hold on, Bo Ellis get the team. So I'm like, Bo, my old man. I'm, I'm playing with Bo. <laughs> now Bo put me and Tim Bankston at the guards. Ooh, wow! Right now you got six Too four. Strong, uh... Right, you got six four two twenty. And you got 6'3", 235. Wow. I'll let them tell you he's 6'4". And we was wrecking shop, boy. We was wrecking shop on guards. Wow. Any guard came through there, Tim was like, post him up, Flip. Post his ass up. Now, you know I was a down low <laughs> player anyway. Right, right. I'm posting up centers, so posting up a guard wasn't nothing. Wasn't nothing. Yeah, so we, we ran that summer, man. We killed people, man. And then I went to my uncle team the next year after that and played. I played for them a couple years. I played with them through Chicago State and IIT. When Darren, when Darren was Darren Britman was talking about Michael Jordan at IIT and he had the guard Mike. Yeah, tell us about that. Al Frederick Hughes, Al Frederick Hughes was on that team and he had hit a couple baskets. And Kenny Battle was on that team. Uh huh. Michael asked me, he said, Freddie, because he called me Freddie. He said, Freddie, ain't that my man that was talking shit up in Chicago State? I said, Yeah. He went to Terry. He, he, he was talking about he was talking about Kenny Battle. He went to Terry on a timeout. He went to Terry Cummins and Craig Hodges. This was his exact words. He said, I know this is y'all tournament. This is y'all town. But I got to teach that young fella a lesson. Wow. He, got 60, he got 65. <laughs> Damn. After he, after he killed Kenny for, for a quarter, they started switching people around, and they put Darren on him. Darren took the ball from him a couple times. He said, that's all right. Put me in the post. Put him in the post. <laughs> it was all over. And Darren didn't say that. He said that on the show, too. He, yeah. put, he put him in the post. It was all over. Darren couldn't get no help. Nowhere. And Terry, <laughs> and Terry and Craig gave him the ball every time down. 
<laughs> That's good basketball. Feed the That's pig, damn it. Feed the pig. That's hey, they said don't saying. forget about Lloyd Bats either with the step back jump shot. Oh Push man, shot. Lloyd Bats. Lloyd Bats was but see Lloyd Bats is in and Clarence Notary era. Right. He old schooler. Was that with Lloyd Bobby Bats. Wilson? Yeah, Bobby Wilson was Bobby Wilson was cold, man. Fundamentally Bobby sound. Was, Bobby Wilson was cold, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was cold, man. Bobby Wilson was cold. He was one of the Ricky Green boys. He played on Ricky team. Oh, yeah. yeah. He played on Ricky, Ricky team. Green was tough though, man. How long did Ricky's play in the league? Maybe about 15, 16 years. Solid, solid point guard, man. Solid. You gotta Somebody remember. Just, he, uh... You gotta remember he 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 schooled John Stockton. Right. Oh yeah, man. I mean, I just looking at his game. He could have very well did that job, but uh, you know he was older by that time, right? All right, when so let's go. There? Let's go to to uh, online man to get some of these comments. Sean Higgins just asked. He want to ask you, Flip. How good was Billy the Kid? Oh man, Billy the Kid. You talking about a guy that's gonna tell you, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna spin left. I'm going to spin right. I'm going I'm to let the jumper go, and I'm going to run down court before the ball hit the net. <laughs> to flat out score the ball on anybody. Wow. What's, what's, the first, what's the first big guard you ever want to see at 6'4"? Wow. Wow. So you you telling me, you telling us that he will tell you what he's going to do and exactly. do the move. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes... Wow. Sometimes I'm gonna come down step one step across half and I'm gonna let it go. Wow. I know you're not lying either, because my bro, my boy, big brother from that era, he's saying the same thing. He's like, well, Billy not, the kid, man. But I'm but like, ja, but but Jabari dad said it. Sonny said it. You know, Sonny he said was, it. Yeah. Hold on. And they was and they were scared of him. <laughs> <laughs> Did he talk a lot? And and will slap you too. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, hey Marcus, you know who he used to play with? He used to play with Ferris Parham's uncle. Now the Parhams, there was so many of them, man. Well, the Parham <laughs> brothers, but he, <laughs> but he he played with the oldest one. The oldest one was the tallest one. Yeah. Billy went to Dunbar. Billy went to Dunbar. Wow. I heard hey, Billy, I somebody heard. asked. Go I ahead, heard man. Billy. I heard Billy. Brother was cold too. Yeah, Phil. They used yeah. to have it. They used to have a song. Don't mess with Phil. <laughs> 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 hey, and Phil come up and put that. Phil come up and put that ball in the basket too, boy. Yeah, that's what they told me, man. So I think Phil. I think Phil went to. Did he go to Dunbar too? I think Phil went to Dunbar, but I think I thinking that he went to Malcolm X with Tony. Oh, okay. Because I think him and Tony played in Malcolm X together. Wow, man, that's another. And then we still got somebody on the comments. They wanted to ask y'all about Tim Hardaway and Zeke when they went at the IT. Do y'all remember that? I don't remember that. One. I, don't, I don't remember. I don't remember more so than than uh, Zeke going with going into Tracy. Okay, back in the that day. That was a classic. Okay. Yeah, that was a classic. I would have loved to have seen that. I missed that. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. Wow. It's so, a lot of ball players. There's a lot of great hoopers, man, from Chicago, Flip, that me and Bobby think don't get they just do, and that's why we got Darren on. That's why we got yourself on. Um, we, we want people – to understand that Chicago just that wasn't built off, you know, Derrick Rose and Jabari Parker. <laughs> you know, it goes the list goes so far down, man, that there's so many no, and, great and, players that came and, out. Right. And some made it to the NBA and some, some did. Everybody can't make it. It's just too many. It's too many people in Chicago, dude. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's a whole lot of players, man. It's a whole lot of players, man, that play here, man. That was great. That that was great, man. That don't get they just do like Voise winners. Man, 
Man, yes. Boise, Winters, Boise Winters was scoring 70s, man. What, high school, right. what high school did he go to, Flip? He went to Gage Park. Wow. Yep. They say he was, in the, was he was in the blue. He was in the blue division. But you got to understand when we play, blue division was tough. It was still tough. It was tough in the blue division. Even though we was in the red, you had blue division teams that was man massacring people. Yeah, because those blue teams got an opportunity if they win their conference, they move up to the red. Exactly, so, which Gage Park did. Mm -hmm. Gage Park went up. Voise, I think Voise graduated with Ephraim them. They moved up, they moved up to the red <laughs> with us. Him getting 70s and stuff like that. JJ so don't get was, his JJ don't that? get his just do. Yeah, it. man. I, I remember hearing stories about JJ in high school at Metro. They like the house that JJ built, you know. And I'm like, what? He now, built this? this? Now listen to this. Do you remember when you was in high school? They say you was you was on your way to breaking JJ record. Uh huh. Because JJ averaged forty four a game. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Yeah, I remember talking to him about that. And he averaged forty four a game. And one stretch, Lib was averaging forty some a game. They was like yes, Lib only way to break yeah. JJ record. Yeah, Lib, I didn't know you was averaging forty four a damn game. Man, I used to put them numbers up, boy. <laughs> they, don't wanna, they, don't, they don't want to talk man, about that. JJ, man, JJ offense, man, was unreal, man. Yeah, we got to get JJ. He went to the, we went to the wrong JJ. school, you think? No, he went Bradley, to Bradley, right? Yeah, he went to Bradley. They won the NIT. Right, they won the NIT. And they, oh. used, to they used to practice against King when they were in college. Wow. Really? You, had, you had you had Donald Reese was the center at Bradley. You had JJ Anderson was the forward, small forward. Well, he played power forward. Uh -huh. You had Barney Mines was the small forward. And then you had Willie Scott was the point guard. Now wow. Willie Scott was the king. Wow. Well, king putting them out, boy. Willie Scott was Willie Scott played with Teddy Grubbs at, at King. He was Teddy Grubbs' point guard. And they I heard he was lightning quick. Yeah. And that's Isaiah Thomas' first cousin. Wow. Wow. Now they now you take you take them four and you throw in Tracy brother, Kevin Dildy. They used to come practice against us. Kevin Dildy was so good, man, at small forward and big and could flat out shoot the ball. And his main thing. He could bank the ball from anywhere on the court. Dang. See, that's why and Chicago see why, was crazy. And I see why Tracy talked a lot of smack, because Kevin talked a lot of smack. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but, 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 but Flip, I think that's sometimes like what gets people going. I thought, I think that's what got Tracy going. Like when he talked trash, it kind of motivated him like, man, some people can't t talk trash and back it up. You know, he can talk trash and he was backing it up. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you another guy that was good, man. Nobody never even knew about his talent. You just could flat out put the ball in the basket that I used to play in the projects with all the time. Your big brother, Edgar. Man. Man. Edgar could flat out put that ball in the basket. When I was when I was a senior in high school, my girlfriend lived in the projects with y'all. Her name was Nina Moore. Wow. And I used to be up there in the house, and Steve-O, your cousin, them used to be like, flip up there. Yeah, go get him. Let him come down here and play. And I used to come <laughs> down here and play with your brother now. Wow. Because Daryl yeah. was Daryl Daryl was was on the team with me. Yeah. And Daryl, man, Daryl has, man. I just hated that Daryl and Cox didn't get along because Daryl, man, Daryl has so many unreal tricks, man. Yeah. And it, the thing about it is his tricks wasn't even, it wasn't even hard for him. It was easy for him. Uh -huh. He did it effortlessly, man, because that was his skill level. Yeah. But wow. whenever Cox, whenever Cox said something to him that he didn't I like. I tell people this all the time, Flip, man. I tell them. I tell people this all the time, Flip, that I got a little bit of both of them in me, you know, and that's what, that's that package, yeah, you know. Yeah, you do. That, that, 
Yeah, man. Them boys were bad, man. I ain't gonna even front. My two brothers were bad as fuck on that court, man. And yeah, that's when how they... you got to where you got to live. <clears throat> doubt. You attributed that to them? No doubt. Man, when Mark when Marcus came to King, man, and I seen him play, I say he played like the both of them. Mm-hmm. Lib <laughs> was able to steal. Good job, Lib. Man, I say, I say he played like, but one thing about Edgar, Edgar played hard all the time. Concrete, wood, wherever. <laughs> he played. Lib, Lib, big brother, played hard every time he played. Is this the one okay. that you say was like six two, Lib? Yeah, he go, he appreciate. Yeah, and yep. nobody could, yep. nobody could do nothing with him. Nobody. And yep. I seen them bring, I seen them bring people from around, around all the town. You know they used to always, <laughs> used to always play that in the project. Yep. And they couldn't do nothing with him, man. Yep. I used to be like, Edgar, man, damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, go, wouldn't go to school, man. Wouldn't go to school. He just, he just like Lavertis' brother. Yep. Yeah, Lavertis, no, Lavertis had two brothers. Shaky was one, and he had Milton. Milton, Milton always won. Yeah, yeah. Milton was Milton was cold on the court. I remember Milton. Yeah. He just right. wanted the game bang. He didn't want to do school. He just wanted the game bang. But he wanted those guys, Bobby. Like, you come to the hood, and you be talking shit. He'd be like, "Man, let me get out and teach this nigga a lesson." <laughs> he just had it like that. He just get it on call. He had it like that, man. He had he 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 had it like that, man. And you gotta understand, you 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 gotta understand, man. And people don't understand about the pipeline of King. People always thought that coach was the instrumental on bringing people into the school. A lot of the players was befriending other people and was bringing them into the school. Oh. A lot of them. Coach Cox and never was heard doing about, y'all own recruiting. Hold on. Coach Cox never heard about Lavertis Robinson. Never knew who he was. Never know where he came from. Mm. You know how he found out about Lavertis? Through me. Uh. He found out about Lavertis through me because of my defensive back coach used to be the field house coach at LeClaire Courts. Coach Hill. Uh, uh. Coach Hill used to have, used to teach Shaky and Milton how to play. Oh wow! Lavertis used, to, Lavertis used to be a snotty nosed kid on the porch that never played. Yeah, Sean Higgins just asked about that too. <laughs> he just asked you uh, how uh, whatever happened to Lavertis Robinson. You around? Lavertis yeah, around? He was he just right. He had the, he had the bunnies over there on, over there. Yeah, but. Like I said, the Verdes, he's steady on the porch. He getting taller and taller. And Coach Hill, like, man, y'all want the Verdes? I'm like, yeah, Coach. Yeah, we'll take the Verdes. <laughs> Shit, the Verdes, right now, as a freshman, he's 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Dang. So I'm like, yeah. We bring him to King. <laughs> Same year, Daryl Liberty come to King. Mm -hmm. David Weatherall come to King. Gerald Morrow come to King. Now, mind you, I'm the only senior on the squad. Mm -hmm. Dang. I'm the only senior on the squad. Tracy a sophomore. Romel a junior. And I'm playing with three freshmen. Wow. wow. And, yeah, we, and yeah, we lost to Marshall in the final four. And the only reason why we lost to Marshall in the Final Four is because I played with three freshmen and Marshall had five seniors. Joe Stiffen, Fred Marshall. Marshall. Yeah, I remember Not that guy. Kevin Upshaw, but his little brother, Upshaw. Uh-huh. And they all played five years together. Now, if I'd have had Lavertis in it, no, it, not, not even if I had Lavertis. If Cox had to play, if Cox had to play Durrell, See one thing about see one thing, Marcus. They don't know about your brother. Your brother played awkward. He yeah. played awkward, so you never you never knew where he was going. But right. he knew he knew the spot. He knew the spots had. He knew how to get to his spots. He knew how to get his jump uh -huh. shot. Off. He knew how to get the pass off. But you him bring the ball up court. You never know. You you never can know where he was going. Bobby, when That's I tell facts. you, when I, when I tell you he was unreal, 
and he never really he never really showed his talents until he started playing in playground tournaments. Yep. <laughs> wow. When he when he started playing the playground yeah. tournaments, and they was like, man, killer cat. Man, stretch. They was like, man, stretch hit 50 over there. I said, what stretch? It was like, girl. Yeah. I said, man, I gotta, I gotta go see stretch, man. And I want to see them play one time in the playground league, man. He destroyed them, man. He was putting the ball in the basket like MJ. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. But and him and could, Cox couldn't, they was button heads. Yeah, man. Cox, Cox, man, Cox was a coach, man. He was set in his ways. He was, yeah, he was. Me and him, me and him never got alone in high school. Dang, me, but you got all along. You got to remember, you got to remember, Bobby, I'm street minded. You can't mm -hmm. tell me nothing. I'm street minded. I'm man. I'm. I don't need no money. Man, I got. <laughs> I got grown women. I got grown women. I ain't got girls. I got grown women. <laughs> I'm coming to practice. I'm destroying everybody in practice. He telling me to do things. I'm like, man, that ain't what the old guys that I play with tell me what to do. So now we bump, we bump ahead. We bump ahead. One time, man, I'm going to tell you this story. One time we were getting ready to play Roberson. Romel fell sick be in the practice before the game. Well, every time we play Roberson, Cox used to get nervous because, you know, that, that was his old school. Mm -hmm. So Romel was like, my stomach hurt. My stomach and coach was like, Yo, your fucking stomach ain't gonna hurt when you play Robles tomorrow. <laughs> so I shouted out. I shouted, I shouted out. I was like, you the only motherfucker scared of him. We ain't scared of him. <laughs> Man, he you told me. Said get that? Out. Yeah, yeah. He's like, get out of my practice. I was like, all right. Well, <laughs> I tell I tell it like it is, man. I don't care who, what, when, and where I tell it like it is. That's crazy. Right. Somebody just left a comment for you on here. They said, Coach Lonnie Williams said that Flip was the greatest athlete in King history. Said he he said he would have been a Hall of Fame linebacker if he would have stayed with football in a Sports Illustrated article. You familiar with that? Yeah, he did. He he made he got that article when I was overseas. He made that article. That was my wow. football coach. Wow. Wow. That was my football. A Hall coach. of Fame linebacker and tight end. We say flip, forget that. I stick with basketball. It's a little bit more uh, less contact. That that boy. No, Cox wouldn't let me play football. Oh yeah, that's right. He stabbed you out of there. He took you up out of there. Man, this is this was this is another good one, man. This is another good one. I like this one, man. Flip. Keep going, man. Keep talking, man, because uh, this one is some good I, information. Though, I, like, some of the stuff I don't. One thing I can say about Coach Cox, man, he settled me down. He made me. He made me more mindful about school. He made me more mindful about school. Most of all, he made me more mindful about family, sticking together, staying together. Cause man, I had different friends. Man, I wasn't I wasn't with that. You got to be with the ball players all the time. And man, one time, man, we 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 in the summer league. Man, we playing four five games a day. You know how it is, Marcus. I'm like, man, I'm not going today. Right. I'm not going today. I'm at this little girl house. I'm laid up, man. But you know, next thing I hear, bum 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 bum. I'm like, I know that motherfucker home. <laughs> hey, man, the ball boy come up. Hey, man, coach said, come outside. I come outside. He's like, <laughs> get the your ass in the van. <laughs> you know we got a game. You're going to make us forfeit the game. I was like, man, I, I wasn't coming, man. He sat me down. He said, look, man. He sat me down. He said, look, man. I understand what you're doing. It ain't the right way. He said, but you the leader of this team, man. You got all these young boys look up to you, and you got to take care of them. Mm. Man, that hurt my heart, man. That hurt my heart. <laughs> man. For real. And I was like, Good. he right. I was like, he right. 
He's right. Mm -hmm. I never missed another game. I've always took care of them guys. I took care of them guys under my wing. Them guys could move around freely in school. You guys could do whatever they want, man. And nothing never happened to them. Right. Nothing never happened to them. That's good. Yeah. Cox did that. And, and you know and, what? You know what else, though, Flip? I think that Coach Cox don't get enough credit for that. <clears throat> I'm going to say a good 70 to 85% of the guys that played for him got D1 scholarships, you know. And, yeah. and a lot of times people don't understand that because I remember an era where certain kids just didn't have the grades. They couldn't go play, you know, D1 basketball. They had to go the JUCO route, but he made sure he stayed on top of us, make sure we had the right curriculum to get into college. And and I we owe a lot to him, man, for, for making sure that we was on a straight and arrow. And I was one of them, Liv. When Cox first came to King, man, I had all Fs one market period. All Fs. <laughs> Wow. What, what wasn't you doing? Not coming to school. Like I was coming to school. I was coming to school, picking up the homies, keeping it moving. Man, that man, <laughs> man, that man sent me down. He was like, "You, you won't never play." He was like, "You would never play." That man went to all my teachers, man, all my teachers, and said, "Look, I ain't asking y'all to give him nothing." But make his ass work. Mm. And they did. And and one of them, she was a cool lady. But I at the time, I was mad because I called her asshole because I had just moved out here in the hundreds. And <laughs> she made me come to tutoring before school started. So now I gotta miss, I gotta miss the hookup, you know, coaches to bring us to school. Now I got to get on the bus and the right. train. I got to get on the bus and train to get down there for tutoring before they even get to school. Wow. wow. All the way on King Drive from the Hunnets. Yep, all the way down to Drexel. But one thing, Bobby, I go from I go from all Fs to when I graduate out of King, out of 300, out of 200 some people, I graduated 17th in my class. Wow. That's good, man. That's a great accomplishment. And I get a full ride scholarship, Chicago State. Yeah. That's sweet. Full yeah, ride. Sweet. And somebody full said you ride, apartment, job, everything. Now, now I get a chance. Somebody to said you used to come to the football games in the fur. Yeah. Yes, sir. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> what you, what you, what you know? I told you, man, I hung around pimps and players, man. <laughs> pimps and players yeah. weren't wearing But you, you was in high school game. coming to the game in the first? No. Yeah. That was, that was, <laughs> I thought that was after um, after that. No, that was that was my freshman year in college. Well, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I was thought. Oh, okay. I was coming to oh, freshman year in college, you were coming yeah, to the Yeah, I remember first. that. I remember that. <laughs> I'm coming to dock them games with furs on. <laughs> they like, what but, the hell kind of money they giving at Chicago State? <laughs> but, listen, but listen to this, Bobby. I'm going to get to that. Listen to this. The same money you was getting when you was there. <laughs> when my, remember I told you my dad was a that, drug That street money, that street money. So when my, when my dad, dad when, a, I got into my, okay. when I got into my senior year, my, and we moved out south, my mother told my dad, he was like, you either going to stay down here with these niggas or you're going to move out here and get yourself together out here. So my, my dad used to come to my games a lot. This is one of the reasons why I stayed home and went to school. I was like, Chicago State, up and coming, uh, NAIA Division One. I, I said, five minutes from the house, Walking. Mm. I said, now my dad still get a chance to see me play. Right. My father never went to a drug rehab center or nothing. He just stopped causing me and watched me play basketball all four years at Chicago State. Wow. That was, that was amazing. He just stopped doing drugs. Marcus, he went, 
He went to Olive Harvey, got a degree to be a drug counselor, and came to all my home games. That was amazing. You helped change his life. Man, that's awesome. Coming dude. into his life like and that. Then, that was one of the things I felt. I, that was one of the things I felt because he never did nothing because all of his friends was drug addicts, so he didn't have no friends. And to be up under my mother 24-7, that just wasn't him. Mm. But I was right. I was an outlet. Now I can, he can be with his son. He can come watch his son play and, and stuff like that. And which was which was cool, man. Chicago State, man, was so good to me. And it was so good to me because of Bob Hallberg, man. Hallberg, man, my coach Hallberg, man, was a great guy. And I know Tracy said the same thing. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he was a great guy. I'm the, I'm the first blue chip player to ever come straight out of high school, straight to Chicago State. Wow. Everybody else always went away to school and came back. Yeah. And back then when you went there, Chicago State was fully enrolled. Right, fully enrolled. Where fully the, enrolled. Check this out. Where the profits of the where's where's the the money that comes into the university? The men's basketball team. The men's basketball team go play Michigan. Michigan give Chicago State so much amount of money. Mm -hmm. When I was when I was when I was in Chicago State, we played Illinois. Mm -hmm. We played Wichita State. Like I say, we play Michigan. Right. We play what they, what they usually get them to come to those schools, y'all know? Yeah, something in my era, it was like fifty thousand. Oh well, shit. We know now it's totally different. Yes, because the reason why I knew is because Hallberg did everything. Hallberg was the AD, the men's basketball coach. Hmm. Hallberg sets the out rounds for when all when we go on the road. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that, yeah those, more uh, guys like those, that. You know, those programs back then, like Chicago State, they, they had to go play those games so they could support the, you know, the school, right. bring them money in, you know. And um, sometimes they'll, they'll dress you up with the shoes. Like, they might have a Nike contract and say, you know what, we're going to dress you out next year for, you know, with the shoes and gear and all that. It's, it's a lot of deals to be done, man. It's, this college basketball is crazy, dude. One thing, but one thing about us, we ain't had no shoe deal. <laughs> we got we got one pair of shoes for the whole season. That's crazy, man. Just hearing that. That's one crazy. Pair, no, we got two pair. We had one pair to practice in, one pair to play in. I had Thank more you. shoes in high school than I did in college. Because yep. we had a we yep. had a shoe deal in high school. Right, right. <laughs> but like I said, man, I went to I moved Chicago State to the NCAA Division One, my second year. My first year at Division One, we were 16 and 11. My third year in Division One was 22 and 6. Man, y'all got out. Y'all was in the whack all along? No, we was in the independent. Independent. Now, we were in the independent. They should have stayed we in the independent. independent. We was in the independent with Notre Dame, Marquette, DePaul, and we had the best record in the independent. Wow. Wow. We thought hey, we somebody gonna get, we thought hey, we, was gonna get a we thought we was gonna get a bid, but they took the ball in the NCAA with a messed up record, and we got ousted. Hmm. Wow. At a 22 and six record. That's good. They ain't been that good since y'all left. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> hey, your boy James Moore said, Tell Flip, thanks for getting me into MJ's restaurant that's every mouse. time that's I mouse. come. He said, uh, James Moore, that's Mouse. Yeah, that's Mouse. Yeah. He said, Every time yeah. I come, the line is around the corner, but you got him in. So shout hey, out man, to you, bro. That's just, that's just another part of my life. After basketball, man, when I went overseas, I played overseas for a while. I played in Greece and I played on the island Cyprus. 
My first year at Cyprus, my team had never won anything. We won the championship and the cup. I put them in the round to play in the European Cup. Wow. I came home. I came home from basketball. I got with, I got with my, my first wife, and I decided I was like, I'm not going to play ball no more. And I called Michael Jordan and said, man, I need a job. Oh. And he hung and he hung hold up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop. I've been saying, how did you just call Michael? You had his number already, or you got off the encycl had the encyclopedia? I mean, how did this happen, man? No, Bobby, you was a friend of mine when he first came to Chicago. Dang, hey. I was I was wondering how did that happen though? You told him so, all your boys play. No, 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 so man. when no, so when 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 Michael got drafted, remember I told you I hung out with Wesley Matthews Sr. Right. Mm -hmm. He was on the Bulls. He was on the Bulls. Sure was. So when we, we took Mike out one time for lunch. And then after that, man, Mike got to be real tight. We've been tight ever since. So Mike loved dudes like you. <laughs> he like straight shooters, Jack. Mike yeah. don't, he don't want no fakes around. Straight Mar shooter. Shit, Marcus will tell you, we've been friends since uh -huh. 84. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's and uh, like I said, Bobby, I came home. I called him. I said, I want a job. And he hung up on me. I got in my car. I lived in Salk Village. I got in my car. I drove from Salk Village all the way to Northbrook because he lived in Northbrook at the time then. And the maid let me in. I walked in, walked downstairs in the basement. He said, oh, you need a job for real. You didn't drove all the way out here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I wasn't bullshitting with you. <laughs> and he put me, he put me at Michael George's restaurant, man. And I started as a host. And all the managers there had all went to school for food. Mm. I ended up being a the manager there for four and a half years, never went to school for it, learned in-house in that restaurant alone. Wow. I ran a I ran a fifteen million dollar business every day mm. with, with no knowledge of it, just because of who you knew, huh? No, I learned I learned in house, Bobby. Yeah. Right. Every station I worked every station in the restaurant to be a manager, busboy, cocktail server, server, line cook, all of it. But but flip what but what Good. better way what better way to learn? than to be in it, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's what I get so upset when people talk about guys need, I mean, coaches, you got to do this. Well, if I'm not being hired as a coach, how am I going to learn how to be a coach? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's crazy. I coached, I coached for some years at Gage Park High School. Did you like it? I mean, I did. I did. I liked it. Um, I liked teaching the kids. I didn't have the, the greatest kids. But I did bring Gage Park back from the blue to the red. Hmm. And we had a showdown with Morgan Park when they had Wayne Blackshear. Okay. And my son hmm. tore into his ass. So you had, you had a son that was playing for you? Yeah, my son, my one of my older sons. He went to uh, he went to Gage Park all four years. Cause when me when me and his mama divorced, I took my son because sons need to be what they fathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got him. Uh, I used to, I mean, he had already knew how to play. I used to take him to Foster Park to play with MJ and them, Oakley and them, us. Uh, my son wasn't real tall, but he was real strong. But okay. he played, he played real well, played real well. Yeah. But I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of little scrappy little guys that wasn't real talented. But one thing they did was they listened to me. They respected me. They did everything I asked, and I can't ask for no more. They put, they laid it on the line. Yeah. Man, that's what's up, man. And and, and, and you got a taste of that and, and, and help some kids. You probably helped a lot of kids too, man. And I know you're still, you're still over there at Gage Park too, right? Yeah, I've been there 24 years. You know, so so you probably see it. You, you, you didn't seen it all. You know what people are hearing about on, you know, from from afar about Chicago, the violence and 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 no respect and you know your elderly, you know, and and repping and running the streets. You didn't see it. 
I took I took oh, Gage man. Park from I took Gage Park from a gang infested school. So we ain't had a gang member in school in the last five years. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. I put them all out. I've been the dean there for the last 12 years. Now, Flip, I want to ask you a question, right? So you just tell, you just said, like, you changed Gage Park. Is it a committee that, you know, all you guys can get together, the people who, who, over the, over these schools to get together to you so you can talk and share your information with the next school so you all, all can help, you know, each school be better? One one thing one thing for me, Marcus, as you know, and, and you know kids, kids don't like bullshit. Mm -hmm. They don't like you to BS them around. You see, a lot of people, a lot of people try to sugarcoat things. Sometimes you gotta get sometimes you gotta get the worst kid the the raw, the raw explanation for him to really realize and see. You you really have to. And the thing about me, by me being in the streets for a while, so I learned a lot of things. But like I told you, I'm straightforward. You got to be straightforward. And, and you got to let him know in, 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 in a certain way that he know. See, when you try to BS and, oh, uh, you could have been doing this and you could have been doing that. And no, man, you're going to have to stop doing what you're doing, dude. Because this was going to happen to you. This is what's gonna happen to you. Your boy is telling you one thing, but I'm gonna tell you for, for real. See, I had kids who try to challenge me and, and stuff like that. And I had a couple game bangers. Man, I'm gonna whoop your ass when you get off work and this and this and that. I'll be all right. I said, you know what? I'm finna look up your transcript and find out where you live. You ain't got to fight me on school grounds. I'm coming around your house. <laughs> Come on <there. laughs> I'm coming over there. Hey, one time Flip, I went. One, one time, Do you think one the time, problem? Hey, Bobby, one time I went. One time I went in Motown, and they was like, I went right up on the corner. It was 15. I'm on the corner. I was like, Here I am, dude. What you gonna do now? They was like, <laughs> Man, why you got this dude coming over <laughs> here? And I said, Yeah, you see my boys and them down there on the corner. Yeah, they waiting to roll down here too. You, he don't even know how connected you are. Right. He don't they even know you, here. street dude. Man, <laughs> hey, hey, Bobby, check it out. They start whooping him. Man, you don't have nobody coming over in our neighborhood, man. <laughs> man, bring no drama over in our neighborhood, man. I had one kid, man, came to me and apologized to me. He said, man, he said, he said, Mr. Shepard, man, I'm gonna tell you, man. I went around the hood, man told Big G and them, I was like, man, this, this security guard, man, can't, man, I'm, I want this security guard messed up, man. He always bothered me, this and this and that. They was like, who? What's his name? He said, they call him Flip. They was like, Flip, tall, bald head. <laughs> they was like, man, you better not never say nothing to him, dude. <laughs> he came back, he's like, man, I want to apologize, man. Big G and them told me, man, I better not never say nothing out of pocket to you. Wow, that's respect too, man. That's respect. But, but it's but it's hard, Mark, for for what you said to spread things like that because nobody want to touch that. Nobody want to touch that. For me, man, if it's gonna save a kid life, you want to motherfucker fire me because I cussed the kid out and try to put him on straight now, then I'll take that firing. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'll find something else to, to feed my family with. Yeah, but we need more people like you though, Flip. I'll take that. We need we need we need more people like yourself, man, because I'm and I'm just gonna keep it real too. Like we need to save our that's that's our young generation. So if they die off and, and, and be nothing, then we're gonna miss a gap of something that we could be touching, you know, because they're gonna have kids, maybe, you know, if they stay on the straight and narrow to keep, you know, to keep the production going, because man. We, we, we as a people, man, we don't understand how important, you know, life is, you know, we don't understand the importance of education, you know, and I'm not just talking about school education, the stuff that you're talking about, street knowledge, it's street knowledge too that you got to have, you know, and a lot of times people just don't understand. But you know what we run into, man? And the street knowledge, they want to pull out the guns and shoot. That's not the street knowledge. 
But you know what we run into, man? And Bobby, I know you can contest to this. What we run into is you have a, a you have a generation of family. You have a generation of family who's raised by women, who boys are raised by women. You got the you got the mama and the auntie. Mama got six kids. Auntie got seven kids. Mama and auntie out there in the streets on drugs. And grandmama got everybody. <laughs> and grandmama already at 70. Yeah. So she mm -hmm. can't do nothing with none of them. Mm -hmm. And then when you she get to the school, it's all female teachers. And, and, and not only that, but like I said, grandmama can't do nothing with every, everybody because grandmama didn't deal with, with the mama and the auntie shit for so long and they didn't wore her down. Now she's taking care of their kids. Yeah. Yeah, and she, and now they didn't bought the kids to her, and the kids are 16, 17, 14, 18. What's she gonna do with them? They've been taking care of themselves yeah. because their mama gone all the time. Now when they lose the house, everybody mm -hmm. got to come live with but, grandma. But where's the where's the where's the father? Man, you know where most the father father's at. gone. Most father, you most father. No, but I'm saying I, we I, need. I tell young. I tell we young need to girls, have this. We, I I tell young girls, man. I tell young girls that 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 used to be in school with problems and crying over the guy and this and this and that. Uh, like, Mr. Shepard, I'm crying because I'm pregnant and he don't like me no more. He like my friend, and I tell him all the time, baby, when you have a baby, Damn. that's your baby. That's not his baby. That's your baby. Because he going to leave whenever he yeah. feel like. It. I said, I'm telling you this. I said I, got quick. Small, I said, I got a young daughter. I, I got a small daughter. I got a daughter nine. I can't wait to give her this knowledge. I can't wait mm -hmm. to give her this knowledge. Good thing I got a wife that's on the same page as me. Who can tell her? But young girl, that's your baby. When you had that baby, he ain't going to be around. Nope. He ain't going to be around. And you're gonna be stuck with the baby. But that's hey, can I, I want to ask y'all to a question uh, before we get off because I know, shoot, we, Chef, we could do, we, we could talk to you all day. All I gotta do is go over to my refrigerator and give me a beer out of that and <laughs> light up a cigar. We can keep going. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I was, I look, I was looking on, um, looking at the news yesterday. De'Aaron Fox just got engaged to get married. He's 22 years old. He's in the NBA, and uh, he just signed a new contract and all that. What are you two guys, because both of y'all played at a very high level. Y'all know a lot of people. What do you guys think, man, about these young guys getting married that young in the NBA at 22 years old? I mean, for me, it's kind of tight, man. It's kind of tight because I've been around the NBA circuit. I've been on them. I've been on them on, on them trips. You know, I used to bodyguard a lot of the NBA players. Mm -hmm. Man, it, it's tough. It's tough. Be 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 vivid. I mean, the vivid part about of it is once they gone, they gone. They out there. It's very it's very few. It's very few that you can that you can see that that ain't the lifestyle that they. That ain't the lifestyle that they, they they play in the league, but that ain't the lifestyle that they travel. Prime example, I guarded Antoine for years. You know, Antoine used to have all his parties and stuff here. Right. And I used to be bodyguard. He used to have a lot of NBA players come in. I used to see a lot of NBA players and see the things that they do. I used to watch one who used to be at the parties, never want to be around all the other guys, sit back in the cut, have his little cocktail, leave, Get in the taxi, going about his bids. And that was Michael Finley. I've never seen Mike in the hoopla, in the in 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 the VIP, none of that. And they used to they used to, Mike, Twan used to be like, Mike, come on, man, come on. He used to be like, No, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm drinking the beer, I'm cool. And and I used to watch him. I because I'd be like, I know Mike personally. I was like, I gotta watch his back still. And I used to be like, okay, Mike in the cut. He ain't got a lot of people talking to him. 
But then mm-hmm. you got the, the ones that that's what they do. That's what they right. do. Prime example. Right. Look at that. Look at look at Daniel House. Why would you even think about sneaking abroad in? You you in a you in a playoff hunt trying to get to a championship. You already know the rules, but you want to be slick to sneak somebody in. Now you done fucked up. Your team season, you're a starter, a point productor. Now you done messed up your season. You're gonna get fined. All that. But like you said, that's that's the mentality of them, man. And, and man, I wish Darren Fox, you know, the best, but a lot at 20, of them at 22, at 22, what you yeah, think, a lot of them man? Do that, well, a lot of them don't do that. Well, I'm just, I'm thinking, like, listening to what you said, you know, he's been in the league how many years? Three or four. Since 2027, 20, 2015. You've been in about, like, four, so, four, five years. So, so, so let's think about this. Four years he's been in the league. He's probably didn't did all his ripping and running. You know, so now he's probably like, you know, I, I didn't did it. Been there and done that. Now I want to settle down and have me a young lady and, and start a family. You know, that's okay. You know, but if mm-hmm. you haven't did that and now you want to all of a sudden start ripping and running, get married and then start ripping and running and doing what you're doing, then that's not fair to the woman, you know, and the woman should know that. They should ask questions. I mean, when you when you marry somebody that's got, you know, that celebrity status or an athlete or a musician, whoever it may be, they're going to be on the road. You got to understand that, you know, that they're going to be gone a lot. So either you're going to trust him or, you know, you, you you can't be with, you know, it's just, it's just, that's just the, the nature of the beast, you know, as far as that go. But I, I think the young man is probably, you know, got all of his, you know, playing around out of the way. And now he want to settle down and have a family. That's a and that's perspective on it. That's you can be twenty two years old and and still be ready to be to be, be mature seven. enough to know right from wrong. Like this is what I want to do. This one, yeah. And that's so, true. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I saw your yeah. post. I saw that. Yeah, because uh, yeah, them girls, them girls. Yeah, because I I told them a twenty two year old Bobby Reed would not have been ready with fourteen, fifteen, twenty million dollars <laughs> in a <the> bank. <laughs> But that's you, you know. That's you. It's something from the asshole of the year award. Nice hey, guy, Bobby, though. Well, Bobby, Bobby, I'm gonna tell you this, man. Like Mark can say, man, once you didn't been there and done that, right? It ain't nothing, man. Because I can give you a prime example, man. When I first got out of my mama's house, man, I was like, now I'm out, man. I could stay out any motherfucking time of day I want to. <laughs> right. Hey, right. hey, hey, I let the sun catch me, man, about two days in a row. And the third day, I was like, nigga, you out to the next day, but ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. I so, said, you waited all, I said, I waited all this long to come out here and ain't nothing really happening. Exactly. Between, right. between 11 and, between 11 and 2, all the happiness is going on. Right. When you get yeah. this, when you start getting the four, five in the morning, I'm like, man, ain't shit. I'm nothing here. but criminal. It ain't nothing out here, man. I'm out here coming out of I'm out here coming out of club five in the morning. Bunch of drunks. <laughs> hey, you only see, hey, you only see about five or six cars driving down the street. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I was like, man, please, man. Even when I went to Chicago State, and Chicago State gave me my own apartment, man, I was like, now I'm up in here, man. Shit, shit, I could be at the crib. At least my mama gonna come say you all right. You need something to eat. You... Now I'm in the motherfucking. <laughs> right. I'm in the crib. We go. We, go, we definitely go. We definitely gonna call this segment, man, the lounge oh, segment, man. man, because we lounge, we lounge. Well, that's what I said. Hey, Liz, we, I was talking talk to Liv earlier about that. I said, Liv, I think we just gonna probably chill today. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me say this, man. This is the last thing, man. I'm very proud of you guys, man. I'm very proud of what y'all doing. Uh, it's been enlightened to hear a lot of different people's stories. Uh, a lot of them that I can relate to, a lot of them I've been around, a lot of the guys you had around I've been around. Man, I, I'm just definitely proud, man, and definitely live, man. You know, you always been my little brother. Right. That's right. Appreciate that, Flip, man. Appreciate that. Me and Liv man, stumbled pre- upon this. Appreciate it. 
We didn't know how it was going to work, man. Me and Liv was arguing every damn day, man. I mean, we was finna come to blows over this, G. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been easy working with Liv, man, because Liv is always positive. At any time, it's always easy to get more bees with honey. So, yeah, man, that's the only thing you get. That, that's the way he you get, get. Hey, you get that from his dad. His dad was laid back. Yep, yep. Pop love, man. Yeah, I learned man. so much from my pops, man, and that's what why it's so important for a male figure to be in a child's life, man. It is important. Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, my okay. uncle in the gym was like that for me, what you said for uh, what um, Notre's dad was for you. You know, you always got to have somebody around, man. Jimmy, your uncle? Yeah, in the gym. Yeah, Jimmy Smith, that's my uncle, man. Uh, you didn't see man, that? You didn't see that? Even like that, man. You didn't see that episode yeah, with man. Jimmy on, man. We had him on. That was one that's of the early man, ones, man. man. Anytime Jimmy see me come in any gym, man, he'd be like, in the gym from King <laughs> High School, Chicago <laughs> State. Man, Jimmy yeah. is my man. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, man. All right, it's, all right, yeah. guys, man. I got to get man, out of here. It's been a good one, man. It's been a good one, brother. Appreciate Shout you. Shout out man. to Flip. Yes, Red Shepard in the building, baby. King High School, Chicago State legend. And you chopping it up, big bro. Yeah, love you, man. Right. Love you too, brothers. Later. Peace. All right, peace. Go, on, man. Marcus Liberty, you say this is the lounge segment, and you ain't lying because I am yeah. lounging, bro. <laughs> lounge set segment, man. We 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 wanted to get flip on, you know, Friday. We usually don't do anything on Fridays, uh, but I wanted to get flip on, and um, and it was a good one, man. He shared he shared a lot of information. Um, talked about some of the upbringings and some of the stuff that he did, man. But yeah, I did hear that he was that, you know, he was definitely that street dude.